My name is John Paul Ito, and I teach music theory at Carnegie Mellon University. I've written a book called Focal Impulse Theory, Musical Expression, Meter, and the Body. And in this book, I ask a bunch of questions about things that musicians do all the time. First of all, what's going on when we feel a main beat in performance? We all have this sense that it makes a difference, whether we feel music, say, in two or in four. But how exactly are we moving differently when we do that? Or what exactly is the difference in the sound that we make? As an example, here's a passage from a Sousa March. It's in common time. And first, we're going to hear it in four. And now that same passage played in two. One of the times when feeling a different main beat can really make a difference is when there are syncopations. So if the syncopations track one to one with the main felt beats, then they can kind of fight it out, and the syncopations can get this energetic, vigorous quality. Here's an example. It's a passage in 3-4 from the Neruda Trumpet Concerto, and there are a bunch of syncopated quarter notes. We're going to feel this music in three, and so those syncopated quarter notes are going to get to fight it out with those quarter note beats that we're feeling as the main beat. But when we play the same passage in one, the fight seems to go away. The syncopations get really smooth, and the music has more of a floating quality. Have you ever noticed that beats can have characters a lot like conducting patterns? Like a pattern in one, a beat can be like a bouncing ball. and It releases tension and then seamlessly regathers tension, coming back to a point from which it's ready to release again. Here's a short excerpt from a foray song performed with this quality of beat. But sometimes the beats feel more like a conducting pattern in two, alternating between releasing tension on one beat and gathering tension on the next. Here's that same foray passage, now performed in this way. When we alternate between release and gathering of tension, we're used to putting those releases on the stronger beats. But what if we want a different character? Can we switch it around? Here's a passage from a Mozart aria, and first we're going to perform it with those releases on the stronger beats.
and now reversed so that pulling feeling, that gathering of tension, is on the stronger beats. <laughs> Now you probably noticed I wasn't conducting an even duple pattern. The music has a triple metrical layer, and so we were feeling an uneven duple. Long, short, long, short. Isn't that something musicians do all the time? So almost everything I talk about in this book is something that's thoroughly normal and commonplace for musicians. But by giving these things close examination, by seeing them in a new light, they can take on a new kind of richness. In all of this, the goal is to lay out a range of options for how we move in relation to meter when we perform and the difference that makes for the sound we make. Then you, as a listener, as a performer, as someone who thinks about music, can make the choices that you find most satisfying.